Joining us now for more on the president's trip to Ukraine, let's welcome back in former chief of staff of the National Security Council, Fred Flights, joining us once again on set. Fred, great to have you back for a second straight day. We appreciate you being with us. Good to be here. Yeah, Fred, so President Putin speaking at around 4 a.m. Eastern. He said that he's basically he's blaming the U.S. for this war. Uh, what do you make of that? And do people in Russia believe him? Well, I worry that, that some of them may believe him, but we all know that this is an unprovoked war. This war was motivated by a crazy sense of history by, by Putin to somehow integrate Ukraine into his country because he thinks Ukraine's not a real country. I think we're seeing a lot of desperation from Putin right now. All right, Fred, uh, Vladimir Putin said that he is planning on suspending participation in a key nuclear weapons treaty with the United States. Now, years ago, the Trump administration wanted to pull us out of this treaty basically because the Russians were, were breaking all the rules of the treaty. What would you make of that provocation? This is a bad treaty from the start. I was on the House Intelligence Committee, and I watched how the Obama administration forced this through, despite huge problems with verification, the fact that the Russians did not have to get rid of any warheads or launchers that also limits missiles. Russia actually exchanged uh, older missiles for huge ones. Last year, they launched the Sarma II Satan missile, which had 20 uh, warheads. That was permitted under the treaty. Russia's been cheating on it. The Trump administration thought we should just let this expire un unless it was fixed. But uh, uh, Biden was determined to get back in the agreement, mostly because Trump wanted to get out of it. Right. So I don't think we're losing anything here. Okay. Uh, Fred, early this morning, Chinese foreign minister said that certain countries must stop fueling the fire in Ukraine. Do you think this could be a dig at the United States in Biden's visit to, to Zelensky? I think so. And the Chinese have consistently tried to blame the United States for the war in Ukraine. But at the same time, I think there's a line they're trying not to cross. I know there's reports from the Biden administration right now that the Chinese are thinking of giving lethal aid uh, to Russia. I don't believe that. I don't think China's going to cross that line. The Chinese also said overnight that they want to get involved in peace talks to resolve the situation. Do you buy do you that, though, Fred? Do you, do you believe, believe that? I, I do. I do. I think that China really does want this conflict to, to, to wind down. And when I hear Biden officials say, we have information that Chinese are thinking of doing something, well, maybe they're thinking of not doing something. Okay. I want, if there's intelligence on that, I want to see it briefed to Congress. Okay, I, because I've already, I've heard that China could already be providing you know, more than just what they've been providing, helmets and things like that. They could already be providing lethal aid to China. What do you say to that? I, I you know, I've I heard... Mean to Russia, pardon I, me. I've heard that also. I don't think they're completely complying with the sanctions. I don't think they're providing weapons for the war in Ukraine. I, I think this is a war that the Chinese want to wind down. I, I may be going against the grain for others in the conservative movement. Yeah. I, I, I think they see this war as harmful to their economic interest, to stability in their country. I think they're pushing Putin to back out of it. But they don't want the U.S. to get a win. They're not going to put it that way. Okay. Mm. So and anyway, maybe it's wishful thinking on my part, but I, I don't think the Chinese are moving in that direction. Fred, let's back this up 10,000 feet. So it's east versus west all over again. Um, we saw that during the Second World War. It, it, it feels like we're, we're inching closer to uh, another prolonged Cold War with Russia and, and possibly uh, China. Was this a missed opportunity for Vladimir Putin? He spoke at 4 a.m. this morning, the Russian version of the State of the Union. Were you surprised he didn't lay out what Russia needs to end this war? I think Putin is so isolated. He's so angry at the way the war is going, at Putin's, at uh, Biden's visit to Ukraine. Uh, it, we're getting more irrational responses, more desperate responses. That would have been productive. It would be productive to say, I'm just going to join peace talks to see what's going to happen. But he just doesn't seem to be willing to do that. It may be a, a matter of pride, uh, but, you know, he's just not there yet. Yeah, Friday marks a year since this war began. And, you know, you mentioned he's getting frustrated. I, a lot of people say they didn't think that this was going to go on this long. They thought he was going to invade Kyiv um, and we would see essentially it topple. Uh, that hasn't happened. Ukraine has certainly stood strong. What do you think he's going to do, if anything, moving forward as Friday approaches or obviously after this visit from, from Biden? Well, I think, and to answer both of your questions, uh, Putin is gambling on that he can win an extended war of attrition and Ukraine cannot and he might he may be right on that that's why I think it's important that we give Ukraine the weapons it needs right now I don't want to give them fighters yeah uh, because I think it's crucial to stop a coming Russian offensive and to deal them a major blow on the ground maybe to convince Putin to come to the negotiation and Russia's got a history a long successful history of winning wars of attrition 
uh, and they could do it here again in they, Ukraine. It they, appears that way. It doesn't look they, like this war is ending anytime soon. They have they have a record of doing badly, taking enormous losses, slogging yeah. it out, and eventually winning wars of attrition over hundreds Think of years. Think about the Second World War. They lost more people than any other nation uh, in the Second World War, and I think history has, has forgotten that largely. Fred Flights, thanks so much for being thanks. back on with us. We appreciate it. So nice having you on yeah. set as Good well. To be. Good to be here. Thank you.